Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson, and today I'm going to be looking at a game called Challengers. Now the theme of this game is that you're preparing for the ultimate Capture the Flag tournament. You're going to be building up your team with maybe a Kraken, or a Wizard, or even a giant rubber duck. There are all sorts of crazy characters you can add to your deck to try and win this ultimate Capture the Flag tournament. And that, it's that theme, and actually the look of the game, that really intrigued me. I'm always on the lookout for a quick, simple game, and if they're eye-catching like this one, well, I think it looks eye-catching, that's even better. Now the basic mechanisms of this game are maybe light deck building combined with card play. And that card play is really much, pretty much war. You just turn over the top card and see what happens. So I'm not so sure about that piece. But you know what, it does have deck building, right? I'm not so sure I would consider that deck building. But you do get up to move around the table as you're only ever playing against one person in the game who you need to sit opposite. So that's a plus, right? So will this game plant a flag and triumph at the top of the heap? Or with a flag just blow in the wind with no one watching. Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back to my final thoughts on Challengers. So here's the game setup for four players. For four players, you'll always use the green and red play areas. Randomly give each player a tournament plan card, and this will show on which play area they'll play their games. Each player area gets its matching flag token, and randomly create a trophy stack from 1 to 7 for each playboard. The fan pile, or victory points, are placed to one side. Separate the cards into A, B, and C. For each one, you'll always play with the basic city set of cards, and you'll choose five of the six other sets to play with. Each set is designated a symbol. Shuffle that group together and place them face down into the A, B, and C trays. Each player is given a set of six cards that match their tournament plan card, and these are going to be identical for each player. The goal of the game is to collect the most fans in the first seven rounds, and the two players with the most fans after seven rounds will play one last round, and the winner of that round will be the overall winner. Each round is split into the deck phase and the match phase. You'll start the deck phase by moving to whichever play area shown on your tournament plan card. Take all your cards and trophies with you as you move. You'll only ever be playing against one other person per round, but that person can change from round to round. You'll then pick five cards from one of the decks. Your tournament card will say which decks are going to be available from you and how many you can keep. For example here, you'll take five cards from the A deck and keep two. This one says take five cards from either the B or C deck, and if you pick B, keep two cards, and if you pick the C deck, you only get to keep one. You can, once per deck phase, discard the cards you just drew and draw another five cards from the same deck. Any discarded cards are placed in the back of the tray. When that tray is full, and it's going to be up to you to decide when it's full, shuffle all the discards and add them to the bottom of the deck. At the end of the deck phase, you can discard as many cards as you want from your entire deck, return them to the proper tray, or if they're for your starting cards, just back to the box. Next comes the match phase. Each player shuffles all their cards together to form their draw deck. Then, whomever has the most trophies goes first. If that's tied, you flip the coin. The first player will flip over the top card and claim the flag. The other player will flip cards from the top of their deck until they equal or beat the current player's card. As soon as the other player's total beats the card, they take the flag token and place it on top of the last played card and slide all the other cards underneath. The total value to equal to beat is always equal to just the top card of the other player's pile, not a combination of all the cards in the pile. When you lose the flag token, you must put all the cards from your defeated pile face up in the bench, which is the right side of your board. Each card has to go to its own slot, and there's only six slots available, but cards of the same name can all be placed in the same slot. You'll win the game if either your opponent is on the attack and cannot get enough power to get the flag, or your opponent must put one or more cards into their bench, but they don't have any empty seats. Whoever is the winner will take the topmost trophy token. At the end of the match, you can take all your cards back into your deck and get ready for the next round. After seven rounds, all players will count up their fans, from trophies and from fans gained from cards during play. And the player with the most and second most will play one more round. They skip the deck phase, so they're going to play from the deck from round seven, but can remove cards from their deck. And the player who wins the final round is the overall winner, irrespective of how many fans they actually have. And that's how you play. Let's get back to see what I thought about Challengers. So, theme and components. The theme is a fun and approachable one. I remember playing Capture the Flag in the school, but definitely never like this. I love the wacky theme with the different decks and all the different cards. It was a fun theme. Does that match the mechanisms? No, but that's okay in this style of game. It doesn't make it any harder to teach the game, so for the theme, it's definitely a pass. For the components, I was impressed. The play areas here are kind of a nice mouse pad material, and the flag tokens are nice and chunky. 
The cards themselves are bright and colorful and very easy to read. You know, even the plastic card holders, completely unnecessary, but they were a nice thing to have. So all in all, nice components. So now we come to the gameplay, and this is where it all falls apart for me. Of the actual gameplay, there's not much I actually liked. And I do think the best, and I use that term very usefully for this game, part of the game, is the deck phase. It's really not deck building as you're not choosing from a set of uh, pool of cards to add to your deck. You get five cards and you keep one or two. These five cards, completely random. There's no real way to structure your deck long term in any way. You're mixing six different decks together. Now you do get to choose five random decks out of six? Woohoo! Why not give us more decks of cards? To tell us just to use all the, the decks of cards. I'm not sure what that one extra deck is going to do. The game gives you a semblance of choice, but it's more just random. Why would I choose card A over card B? Does it work with my deck? Who knows? I just end up picking the one that looked fun to play. You could have just dealt each player one or two cards from their chosen deck. It doesn't really matter. But I did try to do some deck building. Oh, you know, if I have these cards and maybe if I can play it when these cards are on my bench, that could work. But the rest of the rounds of gameplay just let that down. I was making decisions on what cards to keep, but it didn't feel meaningful. But, and I must stress this, that was the favorite part of the game for me. Look at the five cards I was dealt and picking one or two. That was my favorite part of the game. One of the only other pluses for this game happens to be in that phase of the game. You have the opportunity to prune your deck. This seems to be about the only meaningful decision you are making, which cards to take in and hopefully making a decision to get rid of some of your cards to maybe make your deck more useful. But once that prep work is done, you move on to the gameplay. This consists of turning over the top cards, making no decisions whatsoever, and seeing who wins. This part is almost completely robotic. You have no choice almost any of the time. There, there are very few cards where you may be able to pick between two options, but most of the time, you're just flipping over a card. And I'm not sure why. Even games like Uno or Go Fish give you some decision to be made on your turn. In this one, you just keep on flipping your cards over until you eat your, beat the, your power of your opponent's card, or you can't. When you have to bench people, it doesn't really matter where they go because there's no choice there. The game would be immensely better if you had a hand of cards. Even three cards. Just give me the option to choose when I play them. Draw a card and play a card from your hand until you can beat the opponent's card. But if I can choose which one out of my hand I will play, I'd be so much happier. This game just does not work for me on any level, and I would not recommend it. Now, I really did like the components and the wacky theme. I like the variety and quantity of cards, and I like that they were definitely got more interesting as you got access to the B and C decks as the rounds went on. The game is fast to teach and to play, and I did like that you can prune your deck every round. But man, I disliked everything else in this game. I was not a big fan of that draw five and keep one or two, as the deck pool just ended up being too large to be able to do anything like deck building. It was just too random on what you would get. If I could choose to pull from certain decks, like I want the space deck or I want a building deck, that would have improved the game for me. And that, this next one's kind of minor, but I dislike having the potential to move every round and take all your stuff with you. I'm sure you could work it out to minimize the movement, but it was just annoying. But the worst sin of all for me is the absence of choice during the actual gameplay. I never had a choice not to play a card or ho hold on to it for later. Whatever the top card of my deck was, it was the card that got played. I didn't need to be there for this part of the game. You can just let the game run itself. So not a fan of that. Overall, I'm going to give this game a 3 out of 10. For the gameplay, I may even say it's a two, maybe, but the components definitely gave an extra point or two. The game felt like half a game to me, if that. You were dealt five random cards every round and you pick some to keep based on what looked cool. Then you shuffle your cards and that was the end of the round for you. The rest of the round just happens automatically. Why not just skip all the card play and just flip a token to see who wins? But that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.